very briefly, my background is mechanical engineering. Um, uh, I was an acoustical engineer. And uh, at one point in my career, my, my expertise is really ground-borne vibration, and I was doing a lot of work with the National Research Council of Canada, and they were working on leak detection. So we started collaborating with them, and uh, a particularly good researcher there came up with them some fairly seminal discoveries on leak detection, and that is that if you have a water pipe in front of your house and it's making, uh, it has a leak on it, it makes noise. So it's an acoustical experience. Um, and it's great if the pipe is metallic, it makes a lot of noise. If the pipe happens to be a plastic, as is going in a lot of the suburbs of Toronto, you'll see a big blue pipe stacked up. It's called Blue Brute, made by Ipex. Uh, and intuitively, you can see this. They, it, it makes noise, but it doesn't make the same noise as a metallic pipe. And big pain point for a lot of utilities around North America. And um, as a result of that, we took on that technology and did a whole bunch of development work and spun out this company from National Research Council and my engineering company. We formed it in 2003, so it was a joint venture between the NRC and, and ourselves. Um, headquartered in Toronto, but right now we're, we're literally working all over the world. Um, and I'm going to give you a bit of the evolution of that. We are unique in the industry in that we do, we both build the product and we do the service. And we were faced with the same issue that Debbie was, and we decided that we were going to continue to do both. And everybody told us we couldn't do that, and we're still doing it today, and it's one of the main reasons, actually, that we were acquired. Um, in 2010, in December, we were acquired by Mueller Water Products that trades on the New York Stock Exchange. What's interesting to note is at the time, I had four offers for the company. Um, water is a very hot topic these days, and we were, we were being courted by uh, uh, several companies, including another New York listed company called In Situ Form that does pipe rehabilitation. Um, so in the beginning, uh, we started to solve a not so simple problem and you need, utilities need to be able to detect their leaks in all types of pipe, not just metallic pipe. So plastic pipe plus leak, very, very simply, not to give you an acoustic lesson, but it makes subsonic noise, so humans can't actually hear it. And the existing equipment in the market had a hard time with it as well. Uh, so we started selling equipment. We developed an excellent reputation as a better mousetrap, and we thought the world would, would come to us. Um, so better leak detection, we had better training, we had excellent support, equals no more dry holes. So when a, when a utility like Toronto goes out to, to dig a leak, very often they'll dig a dry hole. The leak's not where the water is coming up. And we thought this would uh, be a great thing, but it wasn't a good business model. Um, the reason for that is... There's all kinds of reasons. I don't even want to get into the reasons for that, but you just can't generate enough re revenue. The, the business model, we, we had lots of people on board, including Sanjay at the very beginning, and we all realized that it was not a scalable model. Um, give you an idea, this is a leak we found in San Juan Capistrano. Um, this is an incredibly small leak. People in the leak detection industry, they had been looking for this leak for about a year and couldn't find it, and we found it within five minutes. Again, to the point that we had built a better mousetrap. Um, so we ha invested heavily in R&D, continued improving uh, our product, but what we did is we made our existing equipment work on transmission mains. These are the very, very large mains that when they fail, uh, the results are catastrophic. Um, we've all seen the pictures of people helicoptered out of Washington when on one of their concrete mains is gone. The, the consequences of failure of these mains are very, very significant. Therefore, it's a much higher value proposition for us. We started competing with some very, very expensive technologies where they actually insert free-floating balls into mains with microphones in them to try and find these leaks, and we were successful. We found a leak in front of the Parliament buildings in London, England. Um, they had been looking for this leak again for about five years, and it was dripping water onto the cars in the, uh, in the, uh, um, in the parking garage where the members of parliament parked their bimmers and stuff like this. So we went out, and it was literally the leak had been discussed in British Parliament as, as evidence of Thames Water's incompetence. We went out and we found the leak within two hours, and I've got this great picture when you look at it, you, we take a picture of the road, and it's in a double-decker bus lane. You can see a big dip in the road where the leak was, and they dug it up. It was on a 36-inch old cast-iron main, and literally there was no soil left between the top of the pipe and the underside of the road. So it was literally one of these disasters waiting to happen where the double-decker bus 
full of slack jaw tourists is going to fall into a giant hole. Um, so we ended up working for a year in London, found them about uh, over 150 leaks on their transmission mains and got a very good reputation and, and to this day now we're, we're getting more and more traction and, and we're doing that as a service. We've built the product, we've made it work, but the value is really in providing either a service or a software as service where we let them go out and do the work but all the data comes back to our Toronto office so we end up as a data analysis house. The other seminal advance we made was we induce acoustic waves into pipes and we can tell you how thick the wall of the pipe is. So everybody's heard about the trillion dollar infrastructure deficit. The, the theory being is I set up on two valves or two fire hydrants, I induce an acoustic wave and I can tell you what condition your pipe is in. And water engineers are civils and they're, they're notoriously conservative and they always w would raise one eyebrow at us because it sounds like black magic, but it, in fact it works. That's all I will tell you is it does work. Um, and this is of course the crown jewel because what we've been able to do is we've been able to go out and tell utilities what, which are their worst pipes because they only have limited dollars to spend and they want to know where they spend those on the worst pipes. And by the way, at the same time, we're putting on the same equipment that we do leak detection with. So we find enough leakage that if you amortize a single leak, we found one leak in, in London that was losing about a quarter million dollars worth of water a year just in electricity and chemicals. Water is heavy. Think about carrying a pail of water up the stairs. It's, it's very, very heavy stuff. So we began to tell utilities the structural condition of their pipes by inducing acoustic waves. Um, and we do it without digging any holes, totally non-invasively. Essentially what we did then is we moved from a producing product to providing service and then back now full circle to providing a product uh, and software as service. So we're going to be getting all this data back at the Office of Ecologics and we're going to become a, a data clearing house and we're going to be sending email reports on pipe condition to the point where if a, if a utility wants to monitor their infrastructure over long term, we can then show them what the rate of decay of the infrastructure is. So you can start to see where Mueller's head is at, that they want to own a client then. They want to tell them where the leaks are, when to buy new fire hydrants, when they also own U.S. pipe company, when to put in new pipe, um, and, and essentially own the entire market. Uh, so we want to supply all water loss management and infrastructure condition assessment service. We sell the client leak detection equipment. We provide the transmission main leak detection service. And we, one of our seminal clients, I asked Debbie that question, our seminal client was Las Vegas, Nevada. Las Vegas, Nevada has standardized on all technologies and they are our best reference. Uh, so Vegas is out taking the data for condition assessment, sending it to Toronto, so we run margins in the order of 90-95% on that. Uh, very, very profitable. Um, and then again, we're, we're developing permanent monitoring uh, leak detection solutions to, uh, to monitor both distribution and transmission mains. So Vegas is our classic case study. It's, our, 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 it's really our, our raison d'etre. They bought a piece of equipment for us for around $30,000. And you're not going to build, you have to sell a lot of equipment to have a scalable model at that kind of pricing. We began discussions with engineering. We did pipe integrity testing pilot studies. We analyzed the entire pipe that, that goes along the strip, saved them uh, about $2 million. We moved infrastructure from good pipe to bad pipe on the strip. We found seven leaks on the strip, which is very significant from them because they've shut hotels down for 24 hours there. And you can imagine mm -hmm. what they think of that. Um, and now LVVWD takes the data, sends it to our offices. Um, we've just been awarded all the leak detection and condition assessment for the city of New Orleans. It's a very seminal win for our company. It's sort of the second seminal win. Um, imagine you're spraying a water hose on your lawn and you stick it in a bucket of water and the noise disappears because you have some back pressure against the water flow. Same is true with leaks in New Orleans. They're primarily below the water table so the soils are saturated. So since Katrina, they've been losing 70% of the water that they pump. So 70% of the water that comes out of their treatment plant is pumped into the ground. It's a huge number. We figure they're losing somewhere around $25 million a year just on, on electricity cost. Um, and no one's been able to find their leaks. So in, in four days we went in and we found about 400,000 liters per day of leakage on leaks they've been looking for. These are leaks actually shooting out of the ground and no one can find them because they're traveling literally through sometimes through electrical conduits, hundreds of meters. 
Um, so 400,000 liters a day is an Olympic swimming pool every week, basically. So that's the kind, and we did that in four days. Um, so we've just won the entire project from them. And again, we want to, to replicate that uh, success. We're look, talking to Los Angeles right now. Actually, I could list as long as my arm on the water utilities we're talking to.